I wish there was better representation of the left in pop culture, social media, mainstream media, and politics in general. You know, with politicians who have a chance of making it. But the way it has been, instead of focusing on the poor, the disadvantaged, income inequality, housing, actual class struggles, people instead focus on race, gender, sexual orientation, and things like Islam, and essentially arguing for open borders, as if focusing on those things will trickle down to the poor, the disadvantaged, that it will somehow solve income inequality, that it will take care of housing automatically, that it will just somehow solve class struggles. It's kind of like how the right wing thinks that if you give a whole bunch of money to the very rich, that it will trickle down to everyone else. It's this strange notion that focusing on identity politics will trickle down to take care of the problems, the actual problems in this country. It's such a farce. And it's one of the reasons why so many people on the left get criticized so much. It's also one of the reasons why the left gets defeated so much. Now, granted, you know, all across the left, except some of the mainstream left, there has been a focus on universal health care, which is great. But when people focus on universal health care, it's always mixed with a bunch of crap, you know, mostly identity politics. Crap that anyone with half a brain wants nothing to do with. One of the problems is the way that so many people in the modern left act like because they're so indoctrinated with the crap that they crank out at universities, and of course they don't look at it as being indoctrinated, they say, oh, we're educated. Yeah, they, they act like they're more intelligent than everyone else, that they're better than everyone else. Yep, you're the intelligent ones. You're on the left. The fake left. But you're on the left. Now, I shouldn't call it the fake left, but uh, it's crap. But, you know, you're on the left, and you think that any of the labels you give to people you disagree with, like racist, sexist, etc., are accurate by default. Because you're so educated. You're so smart. Because, you know, being indoctrinated makes you smart, right? And people on the right who apply labels to you, like SJW and NPC, etc., are wrong by default because they're intellectually inferior to you. Or so you think. People on the left think that you're strawmanning them when you dish out labels like SJW, NPC, etc. Just like people on the right think you're strawmanning them when you call them racist, sexist, etc. And so on. Sewing on. Sewing on a pant leg. Neither side ever really sits down and fully considers that some of the labels that they're being called might have some truth to them. Or that there might be some actual, genuinely undesirable things about their approach to politics or just scenarios in general. When you call someone an SJW, for instance, to quote Urban Dictionary, an SJW is an annoying person who tells other people what to do while hiding behind the false pretense that they are protecting some vulnerable person or group. Whether someone truly meets that definition is hard to quantify. It's hard to accurately determine. There's a fine line there. I do think that most people are genuinely trying to be good people, regardless of how they actually treat others. One's belief system can most definitely affect the way that someone treats people. We know this very well from what religion can do to people. As Steven Weinberg says, with or without religion, good people can behave well, and bad people can do evil. But for good people to do evil, that takes religion. And to me, it matters little whether it's a theistic religion or a secular religion. They both can cause people to do horrible things and treat people like crap, while thinking they're doing good things. 
If you're not able to see that you're telling other people what to do, and you genuinely think that you're protecting or white knighting a set of demographics, or a single demographic, even if it can be proven that you're not actually helping them, then you're kind of brainwashed as far as I'm concerned. Then there's the right-wing version of SJW. And to be fair, right-wingers were the original SJWs. But I like to call modern right-wing SJWs, I like to call them MJWs, moral justice warriors. An MJW is an annoying person who tells other people what to do and what to think, while hiding behind a false pretense that they're righteous because their religion says so. They think they're doing the work of their God. They want big government in the way that people live their personal lives and, you know, small government when it comes to the way that business is done. Yet they claim that they're all about small government, right? They can't seem to see their hypocrisy. Now, when someone is considered an NPC, which means a non-player character, like in a video game, like a character you run across in a game that you can't do anything with, you have no control over, and its programming really isn't very complex. It usually repeats the same phrases over and over again. So yeah, when you call a person an NPC, you're insinuating that someone acts like they've been programmed rather than having any sort of free will or have any sort of independent thinking. You can usually guess how they'll react to just about any situation. NPCs all use the same lingo, they all know the same lingo, they all use the same reasoning, and they all approach things pretty much the same way. Now, NPCs aren't just on the left. NPCs are on the right as well. There's a lot of Trump supporters who are NPCs. You can pretty much guess how they're going to respond to everything. Someone said something bad about Trump. Oh, it's fake news, you know, as an example, right? And it's kind of funny because a lot of people who act like NPCs straw man why people are calling them NPCs. They don't seem to understand that the reason why they're being called an NPC is that people can pretty much guess how they're going to react. They can read them like a map. People who have been around NPCs for any period of time, they can read them like a map. And they can recite all the same tired phrases. Yet they obviously don't believe in any of them, or, I mean, most of them anyway. It's like how many atheists know more about the Bible than many Christians do. Yeah, an NPC's programming is pretty blatant to a lot of people. And it's really sad that so many people who get considered NPCs are just clueless about this. When you're an NPC, you don't really break apart anything, particularly any sort of socio-political issue, using your own methodology. You're completely uncreative in your approach. You recite phrases you've learned, you say them in the same order, and it's always the same approaches and conclusions. The moment you're really forced to use your brain, you start to malfunction and start repeating the phrases you usually repeat, but you repeat them in a louder, angrier, and more frantic way. So, then we have people who call other people racist. Now, everyone is ever so slightly racist, just as everyone is ever so slightly sexist. At least by the old definitions, anyway. I mean, just as, I mean, going back to the uh, NPC thing, just as everyone occasionally, without thinking, repeats phrases they've learned. I mean, everyone is programmed to a degree. But when someone is called racist, it's a declaration that someone that they're calling racist isn't using their brains to reduce the harm that they're Racism, again, everyone has a certain amount of racism, but they're not using their brains to reduce the harm that that type of racism can cause or potentially cause. It means they're not looking at the bigger picture of what people of other demographics experience. Now, as I've said before, people don't multitask well. Humans just don't really multitask. Multipass? 
And if we fill pretty much all of our thoughts or most of our thoughts with whether we're potentially going to offend someone or whether we could potentially cause harm, even if we're trying to treat people decently, it's going to have a detrimental effect on our ability to function efficiently. But I totally get that there are people out there who just don't seem to care about others. They only care about themselves. And there are mindsets and even sort of a dogma associated with people who don't seem to really care about others. And when people are like that, and it particularly affects the subject of race, issues around race, I certainly don't have a real problem with calling people like that racist. But do you think calling them racist will make them less self-centered? If they're racist for those kinds of reasons, then they're probably pretty sexist as well. And if they're straight and they have that kind of attitude, they're probably homophobic as well. The truth is, there's really nothing short of a life-changing experience that's going to change someone who has a mindset like that. This is why Trump is viewed by many as racist, sexist, homophobic, etc. It's because he's self-centered to the point where his attitude has a negative effect on a number of people. In fact, he's so self-centered and narcissistic that he gets enjoyment out of making people feel bad who don't praise him. And then there are people who actually feel, who genuinely feel that some races are superior to other races, and that we should treat people of different races based on an assumption of where they reside on the hierarchy of superiority and inferiority. Those people are somewhat a rarity in most parts of the country. But when you run across someone like that, at least when I run across someone like that, it makes me take a step back. When I lived in Shimokin, Pennsylvania, I unfortunately ran across that kind of attitude and that kind of mindset regularly. Until I lived there, I, I didn't really think that people actually thought that way. I thought it was some sort of a bad stereotype you only find in movies or something. I mean, I thought it might have been in the Deep South, but I certainly didn't picture it in the Northeast. Boy, was I naive. But there it was, right in front of me, everywhere I turned. It blew my mind. I'm certainly glad I don't live there anymore. Now, granted, there's this new definition of racism that's all about prejudice plus power, which pretty much clashes with the dictionary, historical, and colloquial definition of racism. And in order to not be racist under this new definition, you have to be an anti-racist and dedicate your life, or some of your life, and dedicate most of your thoughts to fight against a system of white supremacy. If you get called a racist under these new definitions, it's almost meaningless. Because under these new definitions, virtually all white people are racist. And of course, under these new definitions, you know, black people can't be racist. And the same thing goes for if you're called sexist under these new definitions. You know, prejudice plus power. Sometimes privilege plus power. If you're a male and you're not actively trying to fight against a system of patriarchy, you're sexist. So yeah, calling someone racist, sexist, an SJW, an NPC, it generally does no good. The label that you give to people is not going to make them deeply think about whether the label you give them has some validity. They're not going to think about whether they might actually resemble some of those labels. A big difference, however, is that you're not going to lose your job over someone calling you an NPC or an SJW. Nobody's going to have their reputation seriously destroyed over it. I mean, maybe in certain circles, but not an overall destroyed. Nobody's going to lose their ability to process credit over it. Nobody is even going to be censored over it unless... It's on a far-right website or something. There's virtually no serious consequences for being labeled that way. Even if the majority of people 
agree with the accuracy of those labels. On the other hand, if someone is labeled a racist, a sexist, a homophobe, etc., and enough people agree that those labels are accurate, someone can pretty much lose everything. It's no joke. It's quite serious. I guess I really don't know what more to say. Thanks for watching.